Hi everybody, it's great to be back here again tomorrow. It's Friday, Pashat Achrimot. It's been a rough week, my friends. I mean, my goodness, you just open up the radio and you see what's going on in the world, in the universities, throughout the United States and throughout Europe. Rampage, it's like the Kristallnacht of uh, modern day Kristallnacht of literally, I mean, the Jewish people cannot, do not feel safe. They can't walk to classes. Everything is, is being put on hold and just rioting and violence such evil and and what is this evil all about fighting against israel again i mean it doesn't it's does not to be believed israel's who who quietly does did literally sat aside for for years and the, and the azatians are shooting missiles and bombing our cities and murdering our people and it, and it reached a climax on october 7th when they came in and raped murdered mutilated decapitated and putting children in ovens. I mean, it, things that are hard to believe. We didn't see this since Nazi Germany. By the way, Holocaust Day is coming up next week. And the world is trying to condemn Israel. The world's coming out with, with um, Hague for warrants of arrest of our leadership. The United States is putting on sandals, like locking in the, the government of Israel not to go forward to Rafa. I mean, this is ridiculous. We have to eliminate the evil. And it's reaching, it's really bursting out. It seems the evil in the world, this evil force. But the world, you know, is just, you know, just it just seems to be so, the word Hebrew, atum, so close, so, so like far away from truth. But it, it's so frustrating, like you can't, we can't, you know, prevent it from happening. What's going on over here? And this is the great question that was asked, why is evil in the world? What's the purpose of this evil in the world? I'll begin with a story today. I, I wake up in the morning and I have this like, my hand is itching, man. I'm looking at my, my wrist and I have this big mosquito bite. Wow. It was a nasty mosquito. I'm, I, I go to, the, to go pray, come back from prayers. I'm walking down the lane towards my house, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, why did God create mosquitoes for in the world? And then I thought about a, a midrash. It talks about King David. King David was sitting on a rooftop, and he sees a, a hornet that he paralyzes a spider. And he says, well, these creatures, these insects, you know, God, why did you create them for? And when he's running away from King Saul, a spider places a web along the entrance to the cave, and King David realizes, wow, this, was, this saved my life. Why? Because King Saul saw the spider web, and he didn't enter the cave. He thought, for sure, David and Melech wasn't there. King David wasn't there. And later on, when he was entered the camp, you know, in, in, in um, connection to that story, he enters Saul's camp, and the head of the army, um, Avner Benel, he's sleeping, but, and somehow he moved into sleep, and, it, and his big heavy leg... Um, locked King David into like a grip lock. He couldn't get out of the position. So a God sent a hornet that bit his leg and he released the lock of King David. David was able to get away. So King David now realized, wait, there's a purpose for this evil in the world. He's, the, the simple tzirah, this, this hornet or, the, or the, you know, the, the spider, there are purposes for these things. And I said to myself, my goodness, there's a purpose for a mosquito as well <laughs> this morning. But we have to realize this is the question. This is the, that question, really, in reality. The question is what is things that don't seem to be any purpose at all? They just do damage and destructive. That's all they know how to do is to destroy. Like, what is the purpose of all this? There must be a purpose for this, these destructive forces. And of course, the answer is yes, of course, there's a purpose for destructive forces of the world. And that is the basic way that we could choose between good and evil in the world. And it's also those forces that are able to push us in the right direction. Because when you see bad and you see evil, you want to run away from that. You want to do good if you're normal. And, and that's really what our life is all about, to try to, to recognize evil and to run away from evil and to do good and love and kindness and eliminate evil. So there's a, there's a purpose of this all in the world. At the end of the day, it's part of the creation. As there's a verse in Isaiah, a very powerful verse in Isaiah, that comes right out and says, um, the prophet in chapter 45, verse 7 says, Yotzer O uvorei choshech, ose shalom uvorei ra, ani Hashem ose kol eile. The prophet Yeshayahu says, God creates light and creates darkness and he makes peace and he creates evil. I am the God, I do all this. So we have to realize that evil is a creation of evil in the world. And that evil is really something that God allows to be there, God allow the existence of evil in order to bring the final rectification of the world. 
So a lot of times when things seem so bad and the, and the worst they could possibly be, we have to hold on tight and realize that at the end of the day, evil doesn't have existence because evil will fall apart and disappear. But goodness and, and is, is the everlasting connection to God. That will overcome all situations. And this topic is so perfectly related to an hour portion. An hour portion, if we open up into Leviticus, in the chapter where we'll learn about the high priest doing his service on the holiest day of the year, on Yom HaKippurim, on the Day of Atonement. And it's brought down in chapter 16. We see that the Kohen Gadol is commanded to bring two goats. And, the, and our rabbis learn out that these goats are exactly the same. That if they're white goats or the black goats are the same color, the same size, the same value, you buy them together. They're literally like twins. But interesting, one of them is for God and one of them is Lazazel, to the scapegoat. What do you mean one of them is for God? The answer is one of them is, is represents, it rectifies the sins Something said that centered around the, the temple, which was sins that were they weren't careful enough relating to to becoming unclean, you know, from tumas we say, and therefore a person who, for example, touches a dead body or touches um, a masheretz, one of those the eight different forms of creepy crawly things that you know that, 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 that the Torah relates, cannot enter the temple right if we're unclean. Or there are other, of course, many other types of uncleanliness. So what rectifies that is that goat that was brought to Hashem. But the other goat, which was to the scapegoat, represents all the sins of Israel. And it was too many sins. I mean, there are so many things that have to be rectified in Israel. So all those heavy sins are represented by the second goat. And therefore, the only rectification of that goat is to throw it off the cliff and it breaks apart. But of course, the question comes up, what is this all about? breaking it apart, you know, as they throw it off the cliff. Azazel literally means, you know, the a high mountain peak where, where it was cast off of, and that's a difficult thing to understand. It seems useless with casting it off. But in reality, that represents the evil forces of the world that are eventually going to dissipate and break apart and fall apart in the world. And that's the other side of the picture, to realize that both are equal. In other words, both are part of the divine plan. We can't say, you know, that this... The Satan, the evil forces are a separate entity that have their own power, of their mind of their own in reality. No, in reality, they are these forces that God allowed to be in the world, and they're under only one leadership. God is in control of everything. And therefore, they will be eliminated. And that's sort of hinted within casting off this, the he goat off the cliff, and that's hinting to the fact that the evil in the world eventually will be will disappear. So if we look now and we have to be encouraged at the end of the day, with all the terrible things that are taking place, is that we are going somewhere. All the evils here in order to us to awaken us, to bring us closer to Hashem, to pray harder, to do better goods, to do better deeds. And therefore we can't be afraid. I mean, the, the worst evil comes out and you see it. Sometimes, you know, I, I saw something I couldn't even believe that there was even, there are Jews, there are literally Jews that are part of these demonstrators that have become the most, the greatest enemies to their own people, Israel. They've totally taken themselves out of their nation and they've joined forces with literally with the devil. They made a pact with the devil, you could say, with murderers and that just that wanted genocide. They talk about genocide. They've been doing blood libels against Israel for, for months now, since the war began, reversing the situation around. And those people that are there, unfortunately, those who took themselves out of their nation, and it's so painful to see, but that evil will be eliminated. It doesn't, it doesn't have, evil is, is, is lie. Evil is connected to lies. A lie doesn't have any kind of, stands for a long time. We've seen throughout history, all evil was eliminated. You know, in Nazi Germany, when we were fighting against the most evil force of the world, who could ever believe that, that there would be a victory? But God did not allow that evil to lift his head up. Eventually, it was destroyed. And what was special during that time is that the world recognized these are evil forces, we have to eliminate them. Today, it's very interesting, the, the evil force of fighting against people have reversed. They've turned Israel, the light to the nations, the beautiful light of Israel, our, our country, 
<laughs> our small little country that we're fighting for the very existence of our people. They've turned us into the villain and turned the villain into the prey, into the victim. It's unbelievable. It just doesn't, doesn't drive, but we see that this obviously is connected to the overall tikkun, to the rectification, tikkun olam, to the final rectification of the world. We're heading to very, very big times. At the end of all this, there is no doubt we will come out in flying colors because God has promised never to abandon his people. So it's going to play itself out in a good way at the end. But we have to, it doesn't mean, okay, just sit back and let evil lift its head up. No, we're commanded to fight against evil with all our heart and soul. We can't allow it to lift its head up. We must take evil by its horns and eliminate the evil. And so you got to throw it off the cliff, right? That's what they're doing. They're throwing it off the cliff and that, to that heat, to that scapegoat, and it's breaking apart because evil has to be destroyed. Evil cannot be let um, to do what it wants. But we have to, at the other hand, strengthen ourselves and our faith in God to realize that there, there will be an end to, end to this madness. And all those that stand with Israel will be greatly blessed. And that now we're in the time, now we're live, literally living in that time where people have to choose good from bad, good from evil. You have to walk and stand with Israel. And all that these phony values in these universities, they're talking the name of this cosmopolitical you know, world, they've lost their minds, literally lost their minds, and they have, can no longer distinguish between good and evil anymore. That's the worst sign of, of, of illness when a person, you know, they lose their taste. They can't taste. You know, one of the symptoms of corona, God has sent us a few different things to try to wake us up. One of them was the corona virus, where a person lost their taste and their smell. In other words, they can't distinguish between, between something good or bad. Right? something sweet or sour, they've lost their ability to choose between good and evil. God has sent us the signs, and now we're in the war situation. You know, this reminds me of um, when King David sinned. When King David sinned, and he was he decided to count the nation. God told him, you know, through the prophet Nathan, Nathan and Avi, goes, tell King David to choose between three, three possibilities. You can either choose to have famine in the world. You can either choose to go to battle, or you can choose to have a plague. And he chose the plague, King David. Why the plague? Because I'd rather fall in God's hand than fall in the hands of man. If there's war, you're falling again, and it's, it's a, more, of a, more of a terrible situation. So God brought us the plague of, of, of Corona, and then he brought us war. And the, and the worst thing, famine, we hope not to get there. But this, seemed, but this was an important, you know, obviously these things that happen in the world, these are, these are parts of, we can look at them as things, stages, of course, in the redemption. They're important parts of the redemption process. God doesn't want to punish us. Of course not. But it's like a father when a person sees a child and he's running to a, put his finger in the, on the electric box and golf being electrocuted and he slaps that child's hand, quickly stop, you're going to, it's going to hurt you, you're going to get hurt. That slap in the hand, to stop that, Child, golf a bit from getting damaged is sometimes what God does to us. He gives us these stigot, these slaps to wake us up, the wake up calls. Things don't happen, you know, for no reason. And then sometimes we don't see why. So we person just looks at the situation of that slap was so painful, they don't realize it'll connect to why it had to happen for. And October 7th had to happen because of things obviously that God was trying to stop us, or things that we've done. But at the end of the day, everything will turn out for the better at the end. We have to realize and have that faith and don't lose your faith. The opposite, we've got to be so strong in our prayers and our actions, not to sit idly, we must do, continue to strengthen Israel, to support Israel, to walk with Israel. We have to fight against our enemies and we cannot give in to the forces that are literally trying to swallow us up. And those are the forces that have to be cast off the cliff again. That there's no, you know, the, the only answer to evil is to fight and destroy evil. And that's really a small lesson within the lesson of the scapegoat in this week's portion. I want to bless you all for a beautiful Shabbat as we will bless for the new month coming in, the month of Ial. Ial, as we all know, I am, I am God, your healer. God is our healer. God will heal all our wounds and all our pain and our suffering. And we will celebrate very soon our Independence Day in the land which is a great day coming up, and in Jerusalem, Independence Day is coming up, the day we 
return to Jerusalem, re- reunited now in Jerusalem. And, and of course, as we strive towards Matan Torah, the day of receiving Torah, our festivals, which is our next festival coming up as we count the Omer, great things are coming ahead. And we have to always look positive, look forward for the light and do good and stand and walk with God and do our best to eliminate evil in the world. Evil has no chance to survive. It eventually will be eliminated. Shabbat Shalom, B'Sorot Tovot, Yeshuot, Menechemot.